This conference will now be recorded. Great. Uh, so, hi everyone. Once again, uh, we'll start off uh, with the odd sentence out. This is session number three on odd sentence out. Uh, question number one: You have four sentences on your screen. Tell me which sentence do you think is out of context? Out of context sentence. This means that I should be able to identify a common subject or a similar idea being conveyed in all other sentences except this odd one out. Shraddha, no, this PDF was not shared. This is a uh, this is uh, something which is being shared just now. Okay, so a lot of you are saying D. Some some people are saying A. Some people are saying C. Okay, the government's let's let's first read uh, sentence number B. The government's mid-year review of the economy pairs gro growth estimate. For the fiscal down to less than six percent from the upbeat 7.6 percent projected six months earlier this is what is sentence number b saying the prediction may have dismayed markets but this new show of realism should the government should pull the government out of its cocoon of complacency Isn't D related to B? B is saying that the estimate has been reduced. D is saying that this prediction may have dismayed the markets, but this will bring the government out of its complacence. This is related. Correct? D is related to B. Let's talk about A and C. So far, the government has focused on inclusion, which is not a bad thing. And sentence number A, where government resolve and action can really make a difference is in the area of investment. Now tell me, out of A and C, which is related to economy? Out of A and C, which is related to economy? A. My B and D are also related to economy. So A, B and D, as said by Shankar also, are related to economy. Can I put sentence number C as the out of context one? D is related to B and B is nothing but economic uh, prediction. D is the extension of the analysis of that uh, projection. Understood, uh, Saloni? D, B is saying, I have brought down your economic prediction. D is saying, D is saying, that because this projection has been reduced, Government will come out of its uh, complacency. Understood, uh, Saloni? So, yeah. my A, B, and D, they are uh, related. And my answer for this question will be option number C. Is it clear to everyone? Okay. Moving to question number two. Tell me which one is the odd sentence out. You can take your time.
Saloni, what is the answer you are getting? Anushka says C, Harsh says C, Simran says C, Varsha says B, Supriya says D, Padmalaya B, majority are saying C. Okay. Young adult literature, young adult literature assumes or say assures teens that the world is capable of understanding and sympathizing and in, and it can provide a safe space to explore the unknown. That's what sentence number A is saying. So is my sentence number A talking about the impact of literature on the teens? Is my sentence number A talking about the impact of uh, literature on teens? Okay. Sentence number D. Young adult novels can play a special role with students crafted to validate the emotions and speak to young women's concerns. Is this also talking about the impact of novels? Novels are nothing but literature. My A and D are related. Sentence number B, but stories have always held the power to guide and influence. The power to guide and influence. Is it again talking about stories impact and stories are nothing but the literature? Just like what we read in novels, fiction, A, B and D related. Now my only uh, confusion should be whether C should be my answer or none of the above should be my answer. Let's read sentence number C. As evidenced by studies, as well as our own memories, teen girls are particularly vulnerable to self-doubt and self-esteem problems. Can I say, is sentence number C in any way talking about impact of literature, fiction, stories, novel, etc.? Or is it in any way talking about impact of anything on teen girls? It's just talking about vulnerability of teen girls. Even if sentence number C was talking about the impact of anything on teen girls, I would have still said that it is related in some way, but it's not talking about any impact also. It's talking about the vulnerability. Young women, they could always be termed as teens. You, you, uh, as, as we have always uh, said, Saloni, it's, it's not about that one particular world, but it's about the overall context. But Udeshya, this thought process is wrong. You will not I mark the answer that which is contradictory and which is supporting. Even if two sentences are contradicting, they could be they could be related, right? I could be related to you as your supporter. I could be your opposer. That does not mean that I am out of context if I am not supporting you. So, Saloni, do you understand that we are going by the subject of the sentence, the context of the sentence, and not about particular noun, right? If I read sentence number C. Do all of us agree that sentence number C is in no way talking about the impact of literature on any teen, but it is just talking about teen girls being vulnerable. It's talking about adult novels. It's not talking about impact on adults. It's talking about impact of adult novels on young women. Young women cannot be termed as adults. 
Um, Regan, can you please move your system? Varsha C cannot be linked. C cannot be linked to A, B, and D because C is not talking about the impact of anything on tingles. Just because the noun is common, I cannot say that this sentence is not out of context. I have to pick out of context sentence. Remember, double quotes, out of context. I can have a sentence which is out of context even with a common common subject common uh, noun right common noun when I say common noun I mean noun which is common across the four sentences but I can still have a sentence which is out of context I have to identify out of context not out of out of uh, no subject or out of say out of noun Are you getting it? That why am I not going for E and why am I going for C? I would have gone for E. I would have gone for E if sentence number C would have talked about the cause of that vulnerability as, as a story, as a literature, as a novel. If it would have said as evidence that girls who read more novels, they are more uh, vulnerable to self-doubt and self-esteem. I would have then marked E. Amrigan, please mute your system. Right? So do you understand it now, Varsha? That why am I marking C? And in which situation I would have marked E? The difference in the sentence number C. Everyone, are you able to understand? Supriya, Saloni, Harsh, Uddeshya, are you all able to understand it now? Perfect. Let's move to next question. Question number three is on your screen. Take your time. Question number Some are saying C, some are saying E. So people are confused between C and E. Some have thrown D also into the ring. Okay. In 1991, Laborers were brought in from the villages of Tamil Nadu to work. And once construction was completed, instead of uh, returning to their villages, they decided to stick around into the, in the city of dreams. And thus the slum Annawadi came to be. City of dreams? Which city is known as city of dreams? So, is sentence number A talking about Annawadi slum in Mumbai? And this is just saying that people who came to work, they never returned back. 
सेंटेंस नंबर बी पुलिस प्राइज विनिंग जर्नलिस्ट कैथरीन बू स्पेंड थ्री इयर्स इन अ मुंबई इस्लाम कॉल अन्नावाड़ी सिचुएटेड ऑन द फ्रेंच ऑफ द सिटीज इंटरनेशनल एयरपोर्ट this is also about anawadi this is also about someone staying in anawadi see why anyone would want to live in a in a snake filled bit of brush uh, brush land across the street from the international terminal is a baffling question to many but because poverty is bleaker than urban destitution many rural migrants chose the latter through the lives of several protagonists the reader is able to get a glimpse into what life may be like in a mumbai slum what is he talking about what is he talking about a and b are talking about people a and b are talking about people willing choosing to stay in annawadi okay so a and b can i say that a and b they are talking about people willingly willingly staying in annawadi and nothing else sentence number c is questioning that why would anyone want to stay in such a place and is putting poverty as a reason right can i say that c is questioning that why would anyone stay and it is putting poverty as a reason and d d is talking about d is talking about what d is talking about what D is talking about the experience of living in Mumbai slum. Is it so? Who is? Who is? who is the reader in sentence number d who is the reader who is the author is journalist can journalist be called as an author why are we calling a journalist as an author and trying to relate sentence number d my odd sentence out is option number d my odd sentence out is option number d sentence number d catherine brew decided to stay in mumbai slum sentence number c question said questions that why would anyone decide to stay in this place and sentence number a 
talks about how did this place come into existence sentence number a talks about how did slum came into existence sentence b talks about someone's decision to stay in this slum sentence number c talks about and questions that why would anyone like to stay in this place d is talking about the life of slum but it is in no way related to what what catherine boo has initiated as a link between a b and c yes the common noun is slum slum is a common noun across all the four sentences but d cannot be put into in relation with any context with any of a b or c shankar d is odd one out c is questioning b is c is questioning the decision made in b by bu to stay in a slum i am not marking any sentence out on the basis of it having the common noun slum or not i am marking that sentence out whose context i cannot relate with other sentences context of sentence number d is what i cannot relate with a b and c again it's it's not about mumbai slums versus street slums or mumbai slums versus bangalore slums or uh, or whatever it is the question is not about slums i am not going to use my noun as a reason i have been saying this from the start noun or pronoun is not going to be the reason for me to mark my sentence or if the question is saying pick the sentence with odd context out context a how did slums come into picture b someone big coming and staying in the slums c why would anyone like to stay in slums d suddenly the question of the reader and the author and everyone comes in and journalist is not an author right tanya see protagonist reader author where are they they are nowhere in a b and c do you all get it vani sandeep harsh udeshya saloni tanya simran are you all able to understand that why am i not marking d yes it was in case you will have any questions later on feel free to ask in the whatsapp group that's not an issue at all Let's move to question number four. Context. Try to identify the context of the sentences. Can I narrate a story based on few sentences? Whether it's it keeps on you know changing its uh, focus, but can I narrate a story based on three sentences? And which sentence would I not be able to include in a story if I have to write a story out of? Three out of these four sentences. Which sentence I cannot include? Do you get it, Supriya? If you believe that I can pull out three sentences, I can try to connect them with certain sentences and come up with a meaningful story or a meaningful paragraph. that those three sentences will go together and the one will go out anushka we will provide you topic wise tests don't worry
क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर I I am getting multiple options. I am getting A. I am getting C. I am getting D. I am getting multiple multiple answers. According to a 2010 study, fields of insect resistant GM corn have an area wide suppression effect on insects benefiting neighboring fields. containing conventional corn varieties for example modern techniques of genetic engineering also known as biotechnology recombinant dna technology or general modification provides a tool to make old plants do spe spectacular new things it is it is a specialty of self styled it is a specialty of uh, self styled public interest groups whose agenda is often not to protect public health or the environment but rather to oppose the research products or technology people everywhere are increasingly vulnerable to the use of what nobel prize winning chemist dubbed pathological science the science of things that aren't so to justify government regulation or other policies Which sentence should be the odd one? Which sentence do you think is the odd one? What is the theme? What is the theme of sentence B? What is the theme of sentence B? can i link this theme to any of the other sentences can i link this theme with sentence number a which other sentences can i link it to the specialty which is being talked about in sentence number c the word it it is a specialty of self styled public interest groups what is this it do i get this it in d do i get this it in b do i get this it in a it is a specialty of self styled public interest groups if sem sentence is starting with the word it and it has to be related to any other sentence i should be able to identify what is it in other sentences right do i get the noun for pronoun it of sentence number c in any of a b or d yes varsha the theme is a study of insects through technology now is is 
the study of insects through technology coming out as a theme of sentence number d yes or no is is it not yes a and b are definitely related to each other a and b are related to each other i am trying to find out between c and d which one is odd a and b are related now tell me you you we are missing this clue sentence b starts with for example for example modern techniques of genetic engineering also known as this provide these tools for example being used in b with sentence out of a c and d could come before b so that b can start with the word for example B cannot be the example of A. Because B is talking about plants doing spectacular things. But A is taking uh, the impact of that in an another direction interesting by vishnu interesting thing be being said by vishnu that it could be a c b can it be acb can d be related to b or c okay let me ask it in this way can d be related to b or c padmalia tell me how how is d related to b and c others what do you think can i say unnecessary regulation of gm crops by governments and criticism by public interest groups to research like modern techniques of genetic engineering would make my d c and b come in one order d c and b can they be put in this order d c b because i am talking about the unnecessary regulation of gm crops by governments and criticism by self styled public interest groups to research like modern techniques of genetic engineering can i say this i am talking about d c b
Yes. Yes, Saloni, you are correct. C is opposing it, and that's why I'm connecting it. What I'm saying is, in D, we talk about unnecessary government regulation. In D, we talk about unnecessary government regulation. In C, we talk about public interest groups opposing their research. In B, I am talking about the technologies through which that, that research can be done. So I am trying to find a link between B, C, and D, but I can't fit in A anywhere. A is not about any specific government regulation or any external public interest group talk uh, trying to impact the research. One group opposes it because of its own personal agenda that is public interest group. Then government comes and they come and impose unnecessary regulations. A is entirely different. B is talking about what kind of techniques are getting exp you know, uh, uh, this kind of a resistance either from government or public interest group. Does this make sense now? Saloni, Vishnu, Harsh, Udeshya. No. A's theme is different. A is not talking about the new technologies or anything on those lines. Saroni, yes, they are talking about GM, but my B, C, and D, they are not talking about GM. GM is not their context. Their context is opposition of new modern techniques by the public interest group and separation of these modern techniques because of unnecessary government regulation and policies. Do all of us understand it now? And I again, once again, repeat that we don't use a common noun or a common pronoun to identify the odd sentence out. We go by the context. Is it clear to everyone now? Ayushi, understood? Perfect. So my uh, odd sentence out is sentence number A is odd sentence out. Moving to question number five. Pratap, I will take another half an hour. We have 12 questions to discuss. We are currently on question number five. Question number five. All of you are getting D. Okay, Saloni is getting C. Let's let's discuss. In general, it is fair to say that these activities are performed more efficiently. As a result, these activities, many activities. So these words, the, these, the demonstrative pronoun these used in sentence number A is for many activities of B. So A and B are related. Do we get it? Now, B is saying many activities that were previously performed for free 
are now frequently outsourced means these are now paid and what is sentence number c saying people whose skills are worth say 50 50 $50 per hour spend more time more of their time earning rather than performing chorus and this chorus is being talked about in sentence number b sentence number d says but many individuals most of the time go online without interest in buying soon or buying something suddenly when i am talking about the chorus the activities why people are trying to not do it themselves but outsourcing and then people people you know charging for those services suddenly i am talking about doing online shopping or do you know buying something online in sentence number d so sentence number d is my out of context as compared to a b and c which are correlated my option my answer for this particular question is sentence number d the odd sentence are is it clear saloni you mark c is it clear to you supriya you mark c is it clear to you somya perfect my answer to question number 5 is option number d sentence number d question number 6 what is what is benefit risk balance what is benefit risk balance so benefit risk balance means something which benefits me more than how much it hurts me correct but that means that there is something which hurts as well as benefits but it benefits more than what it hurts sentence number 8 drugs with serious adverse safety profiles are used to treat potentially fatal conditions because they help more than they hurt help more than they hurt benefit risk balance must be struck sentence number c rather than assess a medicine safety in isolation its adverse effects must be considered in relation to its efficacy again benefit versus risk adverse effects and efficacy right sentence number c is also talking about benefit risk of a medicine am i correct is are my a c and d correlated i am left with two things either i mark b or i mark e let's go to b moreover drug safety is a leading factor in determining how medicines are regulated this sentence is talking about regulation of medicines it's nowhere talking about benefit risk my odd sentence out is sentence number b b is talking about regulation no other sentence is talking about regulation is it clear to everyone saloni anushka perfect 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 answer is option number b 
sentence number B. Moving to question number seven. Question number seven. Shoot your answers. Okay, so what should be my answer? And one of the things that struck me as I learned more and more about HIV was how strange epidemics were. How strange epidemics were. The word tipping point, for example, comes from the world of epidemiology. No, no, no worries, we'll be discussing this. If you talk to people who study epidemics, epidemiologists, you realize that you have a strikingly different way of looking at the world. They have a strikingly different way of looking at the world. The C is about epidemiologists. D. Before I went to work for the New Yorker, I was a reporter for the Washington Post and I covered the AIDS epidemic. Definitely A and D are related. We all agree that A and D are related. Right? Now, can I, can I, why, why am I talking about sentence number B? Why am I suddenly talking about tipping point? Why am I suddenly uh, talking about uh, the world of epidemiology? Why am I talking about its dictionary? Now, out of B and C, which is talking about experience and learnings? A and D? They, they are talking about the writer between B and C, which is talking about the writer's experience. You realize it's C, it's C, right? So can I say that A, C and D, they are related and B is the odd one out because B is not talking about my experience and my learnings. It's, it's a factual uh, description of the fact that tipping point comes from the world of epidemiology. But A, C and D, they are about the writer, his experiences. Do we get it now? Understood, Supratik? Perfect. So, my correct answer for this question is going to be option number B. It's the odd one out. Great. Moving to the next question, question number eight. Shoot your answers for question number eight.
Okay, so let's discuss. I profile three people who I think embody those types. Who are these three people? Connectors, May one, salesmen. Are the three people I am talking about in sentence number B, three types I am talking about in sentence number B, they are my connectors, mavens and salesmen. B and C are related. Right? Can I say B and C are related? There's a whole section of book devoted to explaining the concept or the phenomena of word of mouth. For example, I think that word of mouth is something created by three very rare and special psychological types who I call connectors, mavens and salesmen. I profile three people who I think embody those types. And then I use the example D, C, D, my sequence. I guess what I'm saying is that I'm not sure that this book fits into any one category. Entirely odd one out. All the other three sentences are about word of mouth. I can link them as sequential sentences also in the order of D, C, B. My odd one out is A. I cannot link it to either B or C or D. Are we all able to understand this now? Supriya, Saloni, Shankar, Ash. Perfect. Vasha, what's the doubt you have? Vasha, do you have any doubt? It's not why A is odd. The thing is, I cannot relate A to B, C or D. B, C and D are connected. There is no way I can link A to B, C and D. All B, C and D, they are talking about a section of a book, which is talking about word of mouth. That's what B, C and D are doing. B, C and D, they are talking about section of a book which is talking about word of mouth. A is talking about overall book and its fitness into any one category. Are you getting it now? Able to understand it, Varsha? Perfect. I'll move ahead then. Question number nine. Question number nine. Word of mouth could be anything which spreads just by people speaking and talking to each other. Shankar, it's not always the case, but 99.5% times you will find one sentence out. Don't go by none of the above very easily. Unless you cannot, you, unless you see that all the sentences are clearly related. I think this is easy. All the three sentences, A, B and D, they are talking about the theme Africa. C is talking about the human kind of East Africa, certainly not linked to A, B and D. My correct answer is option number C. I'm glad all of you got it correct. Saloni, did you get it correct? Fatima, Soumya, Pranali. Perfect.
Much of the African surface is covered by savannas. Africa is a continent of great size. Most of it lies in the tropics, although we often think of Africa in terms of this. A, B, and D, they are talking about Africa as a theme. Sentence number C, we have already noted the origins of humankind in East Africa where some of the fossil remains of proto hominids have been found. This sentence is suddenly talking about the origin of humankind. And that is the difference. The three sentences A, B and D, they are talking about the common theme of geography of Africa. They are talking about geography of Africa. While then I see sentence number C, which is talking about the origin of humankind in Africa, which is not particularly geography. Yes, it, if I go by the sequence, it will be something like uh, it will start off with B. It will go to D. It will then go, go to A. Yes, you are correct Anushka. Okay, my answer to this question is option number C. Question number 10. Okay. Current affirmative action debates have lost sight of the ideal of integration as a completely moral and political goal. Idea of integration. Unless disadvantaged racial groups are integrated into mainstream social institutions, they will continue to suffer from segregation and discrimination. But the loss is not only theirs. Who is theirs in sentence number A? It is disadvantaged racial groups. Theirs in sentence number A is the racial group who, unless integrated, will continue to suffer. Sentence number C is also talking about the idea of integration. But D, it certainly brings in the institutions of higher education and, uh, and you know, it gets very, very ambiguous. Even if the ideal, this ideal, if I say that this ideal is about integration, even if I say that this ideal mentioned in sentence number D is about integration, there seems, to, you know, there, there is almost no place for, uh, you know, when I say that uh, if I'll try to connect this sentence with other sentences, they don't make a flow. But if I just see A, B and C, I can clearly, clearly put them in a flow. And by reading D, I cannot say that this ideal is, is actually the ideal of integration. But I, if I read A, B and C, I can connect the idea of integration. Does it make sense?
how is how is the the institutes of higher education coming into the picture we are talking about a plain concept of integration of racial groups into the mainstream how how is then high where is institutions of higher education lost social institutions are not higher education uh, social institution are not education institutions social institutions are the ones which are responsible for community educational institutions they are meant for education integration of a racial group into a mainstream is a social thing not an educational thing cba cba if 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 i say that c and d are related because they are talking about idea of integration then which of a and b can i relate to institutions of higher education or where will i put either a or b i lose the track of a or b if i say c and d can go together does this make sense everyone are you able to understand saloni shankar harsh saloni practice would help you don't worry i believe this is your first session that's why you know you you are still uh, slightly confused but as you will practice more you know these things would become clear but are you all able to understand the thought process which i am trying to share with you saruni are you able to understand the thought process vani are you able to understand that sentence number c it is talking about the ideal of integration b is saying that unless this integration happens racial groups will continue to suffer sentence number a says but the loss is not only theirs so sentence number a is saying is taking ahead what is being said in b that even if the racial groups they continue to suffer it is not just their loss that's why c b a they are related Question number eleven. Shoot your answers. Question number eleven. so all of you who are saying a can you tell me what is the theme which is connecting b c and d what is the theme that is connecting the others
in an age of plenty individuals have the luxury of eating what they like persuading children to eat vegetables is hardly a new struggle nor would it seem to work high on the list of global priorities yet america for all its ethos is now worrying about how its citizens eat and how much exercise they take exactly varsha a is talking about the past all the four sentences they are talking about the habit to eat but b c and d b c and d they are linking the habits of people they are linking the eating habits varsha you are correct a is the odd one out in an age of plenty individuals have the luxury of eating what they like no how is a coming into the picture how is a getting related a is talking about what quantity i had to eat what quantity was available to me to eat all others are talking about the eating habits read it as yes varsha you are right c see the theme here is the eating habit of americans right see? b c and d they are connected by the eating habit a is talking about the scarcity does this make sense now yes saloni harsh does this make sense then which sentence are you going to connect with c and d on the basis of scarcity and excess vani my objective is to find three connected sentences i can connect three sentences when i go by the eating habit theme but if i go by the quantity theme of scarcity and excess i can't link anything beyond a and b Yes, Padmalya, you are correct. Saloni, you, you don't have to connect just two sentences. You have to connect three. Which other sentence will you connect with A or B if you believe that plenty or scarcity is a theme? Which means that plenty or scarcity cannot be my theme. Yes, Vani, it's not about past or present. It the context is eating. bani a because a is not talking about eating habit i am talking about the eating habit and its impact on individuals and the population and the americans that's where i can link if i go by eating habit and its impact as the theme i can link b c and d but if i go by scarcity and excess i can only link a or b i cannot link c or d with either a or b Are you getting it, Vani? My correct answer here is odd one out sentences. Sentence number A. Last question of the day.
Moreover, for most nations, government debt is projected to grow relative to income for years to come. The popularity of austerity policies have waned over the past several years, thanks to evidence that it may have been counterproductive. When I say that the popularity of something has waned, but it has ended up being counterproductive, that means the popularity has increased, or say the, the positive impact for the government has increased, because the popularity of the, the waning popularity has actually been counterproductive. That means it has worked good for the government. Moreover, for most nations, government debt is projected to grow. Government debt is projected to grow in the years to come. It's talking about the government debt. D is talking about government debt. A and D are related for sure. Can we say this, that A and D are related? Between B and C, between B and C, the popularity of austerity policies has waned over the past several years, but it may have been counterproductive. It is, it is important to remember that there is an absence of evidence that government with their own currencies are too indebted. Isn't C something which is talking out of the context thing? Or do you think I can relate C to A, B, or D? Anushka, I'll go back to question 11 later. Let's first talk about uh, question number 12. Is C related to A or D or not? Is C related to A and D? Saloni, do you agree? Anjali, Ayushi? Harsh? Are my sentences A, C, and D, they are talking about the currency and it, it going down, while B is not talking about my currencies? Can I say that my odd, odd sentence out has to be sentence number B? Sandeep, what's the doubt you have? B is talking about policies in general, while all my other sentences, they're specifically focused on currency and the debt. B is Yes, Vani, the sequence will be C, D, and A. 
Taloni, do you agree? Do you understand it now? My odd sentence out here is sentence number B. Because it is talking about austerity policies in general and them being counterproductive. But A, C, and D, they are talking about the downfall. Anushka, do you have a doubt? A, C, and D, they are talking about the downfall. D is talking about the uprise because it is using the word counterproductive. Anushka, do you have a doubt? Anyone, any doubt? Anyone who has any doubt? Okay, so uh, great. So my answer for this question is going to be option number B. So with this, we, we end this session. I'm sorry today it got stressed a lot. Usually we end within one hour. Today we got to 90 minutes. Yes, Harsh, a bit. Great, Varsha, glad to know. We'll meet again. Next session will be on sentence correction. We'll meet again. Thank you everyone for joining. Recording will be provided in, in your accounts by tomorrow. Thank you everyone. Good night.